Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to test Treax using the multimeter step by step. So let's get started. First, let's see the definition of Treax. Definition A Treax is defined as a three terminal gaze MT1, MT2 by directional AC switch that controls AC power. It is very similar to the thyristor element, but the difference between them is that the triac allows the current to pass in both directions when triggered, unlike the thyristor which allows it to pass in one direction only. It is used as a switch to control the connection or disconnection of current from a load for alternating current circuits. And the word triax means triod for alternating current. Triax generally have relatively low current capabilities compared to ACR silicon control rectifiers. They are usually limited to less than 40 to 50 amps. Generally, it cannot replace ACR in high current applications. Triax are considered diversified capabilities because of the ability to operate with positive plus or negative minus voltages across their terminals. It can handle a wide range of currents and voltages. As you can see here, we have a triac, as you can see. Of course, it has three pins or three terminals, as you can see. So this is the pin number one, pin number two, and pin number three. So here we have the reference or the part number for the triac. We have BTA 12600B. If you have a battery arc with this reference, you should replace it with the same reference, of course. Here, this part is used to connect the triac with the heatsink because the triac gets hot when working. So basically, before going and testing the triac using the multimeter, I'm going first to show you all about the triac symbols. Okay, as you can see, this is the symbol of the triac. It contains two diodes and, of course, three terminals. So the anode, as you can see, one, the anode, two, and the gate. Of course, you can find anode, two, or T, two, or M, two, or empty, two. All these names mean the same thing, okay? So here, as you can see, you can find also the symbol for the triac. But basically, the symbol is a, is a clear symbol. The diodes are clear. Here, the same symbol, as you can see. This is also a symbol for the triac, as you can see. Anyway, it contains three pins. So I'm going now to show you a real circuit in order to understand the working principle of the triac and how it works. This is an easy circuit that I'm going to explain to you. So basically this is the triac, as you can see, it contains three terminals, okay? And here we have a lamp, and here this is the a DC voltage, 12 volt DC voltage. And over here, the gate is connected to a switch and to a control signal. We have 1.5 volt DC, this is a control signal. So now the switch is open, the lamp is off, okay? You know why? Because the triac until now is not activated. So the current, as you can see, is not passed through the triac because the triac is not activated. So that's why the lamp is off. But if we close the switch, as you can see, now the control voltage 1.5 volt DC will pass through the switch and then to the gate and then now the triac will be activated okay so the triac has the same working principle basically as a transistor now the current will circulate through the circuit and will pass through the triac as you can see and then of course 
the lamp will be lit. Okay? So basically, the triac has about 80% the same working principle as a transistor or a MOSFET. But in terms of testing, it's not like a transistor. The triac testing is a very special testing. So now let's test the triac using the multimeter. Okay? So we're gonna, of course, select the continuity option in the multimeter. As you can see, now a good triac is a triac that shows 070 drop voltage between gate and anode 1. Okay, between the anode 1 and the gate, you should get about 070 in the multimeter. So let's check this triac. Okay, so between pin number 1 and pin number 3 or anode 1 we should get about 0.70 in the multimeter. Of course, if you get 0.60 or 0.50, no problem, the same. So, let's check. We have about 0.68, means this is a good react. Even if, if we switch the probes, we should get the same value as we get before. So, let's check. We have 0.68. This is a good react. Okay? So, Depending on the type of the triac you are testing, you can get 0.50 or, z or even 0.40, no problem. So, always between the gate and the anode 1, or between the pin number 1 and the pin number 3, you should get a reading about 0.70, 0.60, 0.50, no problem. But between other pins, you should not get anything in the multimeter, as you can see. Nothing between pin 3 and pin 2, as you can see. The only pins that shows the reading is pin number 1 and pin number 3, as you can see. Or the gate with the anode 1. And if you get any short while testing the triac, means the triac is bad. Now, as you can see, every triac should be connected to its heat sink because it releases heat. It gets very hot. That's why you should always pay attention. If you have a triac with a heat sink, you should always use the heat sink. If you ignore the heat sink, the triac can be damaged because it gets hot. Okay? As you can see, we have the triac now is connected to the heat sink. As you can see. 